The Pinaleno Mountains in southeastern Arizona can be bitterly cold in early November. Maybe not the best time of year for an outdoor gathering. But this group of wildlife biologists must find some warmth knowing they're here to save an endangered species. To look at places where we can build a soft release enclosure for uh, animals that we hope to breed at the Phoenix Zoo. The animal U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist Marit Allenen is talking about is the Mount Graham red squirrel. It was listed as an endangered species in 1987. In 2014, a pilot breeding program was launched at the Phoenix Zoo. It's a huge challenge because these squirrels are extremely territorial, and research indicates that the females are receptive to breeding for no more than eight hours on one day each year. Our challenge is we don't know which day of the year that is, and we don't know which four-hour window we have to put them together. Once they are able to successfully breed them, we need to figure out ways to bring them back um, up to their habitat and how to release them. So today we are meeting with Phoenix Zoo, Forest Service, myself, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Game and Fish to look at places where we can build this enclosure and the soft release enclosure is essentially um, a structure which you can bring an animal to, um, have it sort of acclimate to its environment before you then release it into the wild. So over the course of time, hopefully we'll have, I don't know, we'll have some squirrels that we can actually try to see if we can release them into the wild and hopefully they'll be successful. This is their only habitat, the upper elevations of the Pinaleno Mountains where the highest peak, Mount Graham, towers nearly 11,000 feet above sea level. The Mount Graham red squirrel is a subspecies that's been isolated from other red squirrel populations since the last ice age, 10 to 11,000 years ago when the glaciers withdrew, leaving the sky island habitat of spruce fir and mixed conifer surrounded by miles of desert. So over that time period, they've, uh, their genetics have changed to some extent. Um, they seem to be pretty inbred at this point. Uh, they, some of the genetic work that we've had done indicates that they're all uh, on the order of being identical twins. Um, but it doesn't seem to be impacting them too badly from what we can tell. You know, they're still breeding, they're still hanging in there in that 200 to 300 population level. They've had a lot of influences impacting them and their habitat up here on the mountain. So we've got um, native insects attacking their habitat, we've got non-native insects attacking their habitat, we've had several large-scale um, wildfires occur within their habitat. Anne Casey, so, a wildlife biologist with the Coronado National Forest, says Mount Graham red squirrels have a lot going against them. They do, but they're also, um, you know, they're a small mammal population and they, that population seems to be behaving like most do. They go up and down, um, they rebound from several uh, negative factors, so we're kind of counting on that to keep them going. But they're also doing what they can to improve the squirrel's habitat. One example is the Pinaleno Ecosystem Restoration Project. So if you look around, you can see that we're removing a lot of the trees. Uh, it doesn't sound like that would be good for squirrels, but what their biggest threat is fire. A uh, landscape-scale fire can take out large swaths of their habitat. And so what we're trying to do is restore the area to a situation where it will become resilient to wildfire, so it can actually have wildfires move through it in a more natural pattern. Um, it'll burn smaller areas, and the trees remaining will be a little more resistant to the negative effects of fire. So what we're trying to do is release the remaining trees so that they receive more nutrients and more water. They can grow faster, and um, they'll they're on a trajectory toward old growth conditions more quickly than if we left it in its overstocked condition. So that's the, the nest tree, that um, big old dug fir there. A team of researchers from the Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, University of Arizona, and Game and Fish has conducted an annual squirrel census since the late 1980s. Let's see, in 2014, our, the census that we do every year indicated that the population is 274. Um, the year before that, it was 272. And in 2015, the number dipped to 263. For the last 10, 15 years, they've been sort of hovering in that 200 to 300 
range for their population. These population estimates are based on an annual survey of active middens. We're at what's called a, a midden for a Mount Graham red squirrel. Uh, essentially, it's this really big pile of cone scales and debris. It's a place where the squirrels will actually bring cones back to and they'll bury them in the midden. They'll bring mushrooms back as well and bury them and that's then their food source to get them through the rest of the year um, during the winter. They don't hibernate so they need food all year, all year long. So this one is active. We, we did see a squirrel here just a little bit earlier. You can see some of the cones have been, um, you know, chewed on and um, the, the uh, seeds have been taken out. This was a white pine cone. You can also see sign of feeding over on the log. Oh, and then on the, the nest tree, you can see where the squirrel has dragged in some, some boughs into there as nest material. That's a red squirrel. Habitat conditions and the availability of food are directly linked to the abundance of squirrels. We've got climate change going on and, and we don't really know exactly how that's going to affect their habitat, but it's not really looking all that great. Um, we're having longer fire seasons, lower rainfall. Um, the rainfall can then affect their food source like we're seeing this, this winter. We're having kind of a light cone crop. There wasn't a lot of cone caching this year, so we're a little bit concerned to see what might happen next year with the population numbers. But again, we remain hopeful and, you know, the cones can last up to a year and a half in the, the midden. So hopefully they've got enough of a stash from before that they can actually persist through the winter. Getting Mount Graham red squirrels through the winter is one thing. Getting them out of danger will take decades of work. But we're hopeful. You know, we've got the Pinalini Ecosystem Restoration Plan and working on the recovery plan and, um, you know, trying to move forward with projects that can benefit the squirrel and help it to recover and hopefully eventually remove it from the endangered species list. That would be a bright, happy day on what can be a cold, unforgiving mountain. <laughs>